Ghana getting a result. Well, we lost in the game in Cairo yesterday, but two goals to one, that game ended. Good enough to see us through Brazil after we won by six goals to one. Our neighbours, though, unfortunately, Burkina Faso failing to advance to the next stage of uh, the competition. They would have qualified for the first time as far as uh, the World Cup was concerned. They lost by a goal to nil to Algeria, so they are out. Of uh, that in Europe, well, quite a number of nations have also made it to the World Cup. Portugal making it at the expense of uh, Sweden. Um, Croatia have also made it at the expense of Iceland. Greece have also qualified uh, as uh, uh, well. We'll be bringing you the highlights of all these games together with international friendly matches that were honored over the last 24 hours. Germany getting one over England and of course Brazil also getting a win against Chile. All those and more coming up after this break. The English Premier League is back on your screen. Tune in to Joy Sports on Multi TV thus and every Saturday as we relive the passion, the suspense and excitement of English football. And as far as Gerrard, oh, wow! Fantasy scores! Suarez, Sturridge, more or less perfect. The joy is cut short, the flag was up for offside, and the goal is ruled out. Danny Welbeck has taken that shot. The English Premier League, this and every Saturday, only on Joy Sport, the English Premier League. Let the games begin. Backlash Premier League thus November. The battle for Premiership honours is gradually shaping up as Man City welcome the Canaries from Norwich on Saturday 2nd November. Belief has been restored at Anfield with the exciting Liverpool taking on the Cottages from Fulham on the 9th of November. It is a good time to be a gunner with Arsenal in the form of your lives as Southampton visit the Emirates on the 23rd. It is back-to-back -back Arsenal Fiesta with the Bluebirds from Cardiff taking on the Gunners on November the 30th. All games kick off at 3 p.m. with expert analysis commencing at 2.30 p.m. Multi-TV, just thrills. Your new lighting really provides the finishing touch. Where did you get this from? Global Lighting Center, of course. They've always been affordable and their quality is second to none. When it comes to lighting, there's only one name, Global Lighting Center. We've got all the latest European models. It's not just the quality outside. Our office lighting features European standard capacitors and ballast to protect your products. Our outdoor lights are weather protected and their diffusers won't discolor over time. Moreover, we offer technical advice to all our customers before and after sales. All of which convinced me and my family that Global Lighting has the brightest ideas and at the most affordable prices for all our lighting needs. Global Lighting Center, your solution to quality lighting. Multi TV is organizing a national installer training throughout the country. The training is for fresh people who would like to learn about satellite installation. Trainees will also go through some marketing tutorials to turn them into result oriented salesmen. Upper East, Bogatanga from December 10. Pick a form at Melmat Multimedia. Western Region, at Asankwegra on December 13. Pick a form at CME Enterprise. Cost of training is 40 Ghana CDs, which includes ID card, certificate, and lunch. To pick up a form, call 0302-211-688 or 0244-340-424 and 0244-340-415. What do you have?
Thus and every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Only on Joy Sports, the Premier League show. Well, we are still celebrating that victory by Team Ghana in their game against uh, the Egyptians uh, yesterday. We may have lost our game by two goals to one, but we qualify at their expense over that win here in uh, Kumasi a couple of weeks ago. As usual, we start with the sporting tabloids. This morning, I have the graphic sports and the 90 minutes on the front page of the paper. We have our stars home and dry. Chrissy Apia enjoying a deserved kingly ride after masterminding Ghana's qualification. And of course, the man who got us the goal in Cairo yesterday, Kevin. Prince uh, Boating uh, there. Well, he may have been absent from the senior national team setup for some time, but this goal clearly couldn't have come at a better time for the player. Kevin Prince Boating and Coach Akwesiapia being celebrated here. So that's it on the front page of uh, the Graphic Sports. Make your way to the newsstands and grab a copy. We move on to other pages in the Graphic Sports. And as usual, uh, we bring you uh, what we have on the Lifestyle page uh, this morning. Well, everyone knows him now. He's called Bob Bradley. He's a coach of the Egyptian national team. He's become a very familiar face to a lot of Ghanaians in the last five weeks. Yesterday, the American magic could simply not work for him. That is it for the lifestyle page this morning. We move on to the center spread of uh, the paper. And it's all about that game between Ghana and the Pharaohs of uh, Egypt yesterday. There you go. Pictures from the Air Defence Stadium yesterday as Ghana lost by two goals to one. But a result good enough to see Ghana qualify for the next stage of the competition, which is a place at Brazil 2014. Let's move on. And on the back page uh, of uh, the paper, it's all about that game that was honored yesterday. Scenes uh, from that game. Rashida Smiler there together with the Egyptian striker, Mohamed Nagy Gedo. Gedo, we all do remember, scored that goal in the finale at Angola 2010 that won Egypt yet another African Cup of Nations. Coach Chris Yapia also in the mix. Celebrating that win, becoming the first indigenous manager to qualify the Black Stars for a FIFA Senior World Cup. That's it for the graphic sports. Uh, let's move on to the 90 minutes. And you'd bet that the 90 minutes always carries uh, pictures of our top internationals. Salim Muntari and uh, Michael Essien having fun somewhere in Istanbul before the game. 
Other pictures also on the front page of the paper, Kuchak. We see Apia there. Andre Dede, are you also in the mix? Didier Drogba, the Ivorians, have qualified for yet another World Cup. Lionel Messi, well, he's out injured now. And we understand Man City want to sign Messi. Well, that will cost a lot of money to bring Lionel Messi to England. The back page of uh, the 90 minutes. We're still celebrating the Black Stars for the air efforts. Qualifying for Brazil 2014. Jerry coming come here. Seen together with uh, Michael Lessian before the game. So that's it for the newspapers. Just make your way to the newsstands, uh, grab a copy of these papers and get to read extensively on these stories. The biggest news, of course, Ghana making it to yet another World Cup. Now, talk of Ghana qualifying for the third successive World Cup. Well, a lot of Ghanaians uh, got themselves glued to their sets. Looking forward to that game between uh, Ghana and Egypt yesterday. We bring you the highlights of the game. Is underway then the Egyptians in the uh, red and white attacking the goal to the right of your picture. The Ghanaians, though, they are in, well, in a bit of an unfamiliar kit here. And I have to ask you about the colors here, Neil Tovey. Uh, white, red tops, white shorts for the Egyptians while pushing forward into that final third and getting no joy for the time being. Bright start it is for them. But quickly, Neil, the colors here, red and white either way, just swapped the other way around, so to speak. Yeah, obviously the white kit. Uh, but maybe they like to fill the occasion a bit with the red <laughs> and get you part of it, you know. So, uh, yeah, but as we mentioned, uh, look, we, they, they're very, very confident with themselves. They just have to have a very good start and, and, and a very concentrated start. Now, there's the Egyptians again looking for that bright start. The shot from range and, well, that's more like it. The Olympic de Marseille player. Tipped wide by Montari. There was Harrison F. Paul. He missed the first leg through suspension, wearing 23 tonight. It's uh, Quadro Asamoah of Juventus, who is foul. The challenge coming in there from Caraba. He's at the start of his international career. And Zaki coming back to do his bid in defence. Montari's free kick is overhead and it's easy for Shep. It's Montari's free kick is overhead and it's easy for Sheriff Akrami. One of five Al Ali players in the starting eleven. Akrami going long and it required the acrobatic clearance by Harrison Afull. Now Montari putting his foot on the ball. He's got very good passing range and he picked out. A very decent ball there to his skipper Jan. A smart turn in midfield from the Ghanaian captain. He finds Asamoa. Montari, lovely weight on the pass there. Ghana threatening here, and it's narrowly wide by Majid Waris. And the Black Stars of Ghana have played a major role in Bradley's career. Always in a negative sense as the United States lost to Ghana 2-1 in the second round in South Africa in 2010 after extra time. Bradley was reappointed until 2014 but dismissed in July 2011 and soon took over as coach of Egypt. Nice play here from SM. baying for Abu Traker to take it 35 years old now a national hero he scored five goals in six matches in the qualifiers Egypt won all six of their games to reach the playoffs Abu Traker 
couple of mocker in the first leg. Scored no goal, and he really looked his age in that game against a, a lively Ghanaian team. He possessed plenty of pace. Taken down by Jan, who has time to turn. Thought about the shot, instead looked for the support and finding it with Asamoa. But the challenge comes in from Karaba. There's Essien. We haven't seen a lot of him in the first 12 minutes. Essien, another player out on the field there, who's short of first-team football, frozen out of the picture at Chelsea at the moment. Here's Salah, whose Basel team took on Chelsea in the Champions League. Nice ball by Zaki. Karaba there. Corner given by the Ivorian referee. Abu Traker will leave it for Salah. Something of a changing of the guard in Egypt with uh, Salah only 21, Karaba 19. Punched away by the keeper. Salah, the winner of the most promising talent in Africa prize in 2012. Garlic. Najib. Abdel Shafi. Zaki. Zaki shoots. Oh, a dipper. Really good save. Really good hit by Amir Zaki. Imam. Garlic. That will come for the free kick and a. Uh, the third yellow card of the encounter. All the issue to Ghanaian players. This one to Akasho, the substitute. A double chance after the dink into the box. It was Gedo who was denied initially. And then Akaminko cleared the follow-up effort off the line. They're queuing up here at the back post. Egypt must be feeling despondent and dispirited now. And Ghana might feel that they can even snatch an equaliser on the night to prevent a defeat. Salah with the outside of the boot ball to Gedo, the scorer of Egypt's second. Salah, he's been excellent all night, he's created a chance for Shikabar. Here's Salah, whose Basel team took on Chelsea in the Champions League. Nice ball by Zaki. Karaba there, Salah only 21, Karaba 19. Punched away by the keeper. Zaki. Zaki shoots, oh, a dipper. Really good save, really good hit by Amir Zaki. The follow-up effort off the line. They're queuing up here at the back post. Salah. He's been excellent all night. He's created a chance for Shikabar. Amir Zaki letting Mohamed Abu Traker know exactly where he wants the ball. Former Wigan Athletic forward wants something to attack. Traker takes and it's there Egypt have a goal Flair thrown onto the pitch we could do without that the game has passed off peacefully up till now here's a chance for Gedo it's 2-0 Egypt Athol oh fine pass to Jan Jan this could be 2-1 it is 2-1 and it's a goal scoring return to Ghanaian International Cup in South Africa in 2010 has put the seal on their place in Britain.
Well, so that was uh, the highlight of uh, that game between Ghana and Egypt played yesterday. That loss, good enough to see Ghana make it through to the next stage of uh, the competition. And I would want to uh, use uh, this opportunity to say well done to the boys, say well done to the technical team and, of course, uh, the administrators at the offices of the Ghana Football Association for making sure that Ghana has qualified for a third successive World Cup. Prior to 2006, we've never been, made it there. But in 2006, we made it for the first time. We got to the round of 16 in Germany. In 2010, we made it to South Africa. We got to the quarterfinal. In 2014, you just never know if we're going to make it to the semifinal or a better. Well, our cameras were out there on the streets yesterday whilst the game was uh, ongoing. We bring you... Um, the reaction of the fans, of course, uh, in the course of uh, the game, when things were quite a bit tough, especially uh, looking at the way the Egyptians started the game. They were all guns blazing in the first 45 minutes. Our cameras were out there, and we bring you the reactions of the fans in the course of the game. Who is out of source today, Michael Essien of uh, Chelsea? Kanaba isn't a Nade Zabrazaki. Solomon Tari. As long as the Sip is having to work on his own, protecting the back four, and that cannot be good news for Ghana. But, the goal kick taken. Another header. Ball on the chest of the Ghanaian. Force headed out and. And they'll take it. Is it going to go for goal? He exerted. The back, really. Perhaps a corner kick. They are live at the body of Amin Mutai. Jerry looking to use his aerial power. scored on his debut for the Black Stars against the Sufu. Mutari, but the corner kick, a poorly taken one, I have to say. And Elisa Parry decided to turn around. And Apple looking for support from Egypt in possession. And look at the frustration on, on the faces of the Egyptians. Anyway, that's uh, Rami Rabea on the heart of the defense for headed back in. And Apari needs to be pacey, concedes the throw. Sala. So you saw the celebrations uh, with the fans at the um, quite a number of places our camera men went to, but this uh, particular location was uh, the Oxford Street Adults, where quite a number of fans had made their way there to watch the game and also celebrate the exploits of the senior national team. Now, this was in the course of the game. Let's pick up the reactions of the fans after the game. Yeah, I'm, I'm present because we have tried. We have tried to score them. Uh, we, they score, but I always say we, we, are, we have uh, uh, take one from them. So I'm happy, happy, very happy. You're happy with the scoreline? Yes, I'm happy with the scoreline, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we are down, but still, we have fun. We are enjoying, we, since we have qualified, we have no problem. So yours was just about qualifying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. today is enjoyment. We are enjoying, we qualify, and that's all that matters. Thank you. Which Ghana no need ya no. Ghana or kill a duo. Stay kitty kitty. I'm a house wife. Sit to tell her what BG am because I'm a dead, I'm a show of baby. Living where I be, I'm a Joanne. He can't get a cavity to go at a bed. I'm a caviar. Ever fake bear. 
Mani woko ten to for Egypt to know about here. Onye Ghana wa Ghana. So the fans celebrating after seeing Ghana make it to a third successive uh, World Cup. We may have lost the game yesterday against uh, the Faroes of Egypt by two goals to one, but that result was good enough to see us through to the next stage, uh, which is Brazil 2014 of uh, course, uh, after, after having won by six goals to one here at the Kumasi Sports Stadium. I'm sure that was more than going to be good enough to see us through to the next stage of the competition, and that is exactly what happened at the Air Defence Stadium in Cairo, losing by two goals to one, but that result still good enough to see Ghana qualifying 7-3 on aggregate. We're still staying with us, a very important game, of course, a game that has seen Ghana made it through to a third successive well with the cap. Yesterday on the sports night, right after the game, we had the privilege of having a former Ghana midfielder, Mohamed Ahmed Polo, together with a sports historian, Uncle James Oedigi, on the show and we took their thoughts on what the senior national team should be doing between now and June when the World Cup is going to be played. Let's have a listen to these two eminent gentlemen. You know, the, 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 you know, the, the players they must you know, set up their mind that now we are going to the, to the highest level. It's the mindset because as of football, they play. And fortunately for them, they are playing with those they are going to play you know, at the, the, the World Cup level. They are playing professional football. All of them are playing professional football. So it, it is at the highest level. So I, I, I think uh, the, is the mindset that is very, very important. And then they have to, you know, keep themselves very, very fit. Because at this level, you are going as a Ghanaian. And you are not going as a, you know, uh, uh, to, uh, as a professional you know, a, a team that you play outside. This is a Ghanaian that so we are going there with a Ghanaian, you know, culture of football, style of football. So that 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 style of football should be, you know, uh, uh, tuned for all the for the world to see the the, 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 the Ghanaian style of football. Especially when we have a, a Ghanaian coach and a post. He's done so much. Now he has seen everything that uh, you know the Ghanaian has. He can now you know upgrade whatever you know uh, uh, players that he, he wants, and then make sure that uh, he always have to talk to them because he's not going to get them. He's not going to get them at, 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 you know for some time till you know the, the time is uh, you know getting closer before uh, mm -hmm. the, the decision is taken for them to come uh, closer. So he should be talking to them. Giving them the, 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 the no, we have a, we have a, a, a very you know a, a job to do. We it's unfinished job. We have a job to do, and uh, we we have to ensure that the Ghanaian style of football is shown at that highest level. Because all the work up that we went, we went with the, with a the, uh, missing link. How would we do this? Yeah, I think uh, it's it's very clear. Now you could see, you know the the. the the, 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 even the Ghanaian formation of football. We are used to 4 4 2. We don't go, and that is why you see you know, our football moving the way it's supposed to move. When, 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 when we have a, 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 a one man, a, a, a striker up there, you could see that we, all, we always have to play, 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 play around there before we even get there. No, we are tired. But you play, and then you, you make sure that you, you have uh, the, the two marksmen there, and you supply them the ball, and they finish up. So we, we play that, uh, you know, agro style of football by possessing the ball and let the ball do the work by scoring goals. You, you understand? Yes, so if, if, if even uh, we, you have a problem, if the, even you have a problem defensively, look, in the, the last match that we played, we, had pro we thought we had problem with defensive uh, setup. But what happened? The defense were, were solid. 
Mm. Look at even the, 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 this match that, that was played. They were solid. They were doing the covering and timely intervention and other things. So it, it, was, it was very clear that uh, you know, there is no way uh, Egyptians can score more than uh, you know, two goals even. It was clear. So if this thing is maintained with the local coach, the Ghanaian coach, he has to maintain it so that we take it to the World Cup where you know, the platform is there for everybody to showcase his, uh, you know, a, 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 a style of football. And that is where we, we see the agro, you know, football that we're talking James, about. I'll, I'll put the same question to you. Okay. We are there. Yes. After a very long and arduous journey. What, in your opinion, do you think we should be doing between now and June next year? The stakeholders must meet. Who are the stakeholders? Oh, one, the sponsors, two, the custodians of the team. I'm talking of direct also, I'm talking of the GFA. Uh, three, the government. And uh, for the club owners, especially local scene, because uh, you can't build the uh, black stars in isolation at the top without any foundation. That we have to strengthen the local league too. You understand? That's yes, what I we do. should be doing. Because my my own two and co are products of the future. The, 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 yes, because they are supposed. So we have to produce more. That Atobra is there. Kobna, you see all those boys coming up. Sule Mohammed of Kinfesa, all those. These boys should also be looked at. Side by side with the Wafu team uh, handled by Maxwell Konedu. So Maxwell is engaged to handle the Wafu team. Then two, the sponsors. It is very important that we know the Black Star, like Sanidara said, is the flagship of the country. The Black Star is the, 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 the easiest exportable commodity in this country. So when you now give the Black Star 100 CDs, a sponsorship deal, how do we now arrange so that part of it is channeled towards development of the coaches? Part of it is given to the Premier League to cushion the shock of financing. Part of it is also given for media coverage. You understand? Yes, I do. That is a uh, stakeholder. There are a lot of stakeholders. The government should always provide assurance, security, infrastructure, and many other things. We all know all these things are uh, embodied in our various discussions on our dining table and at a uh, uh, relaxation spot. And three, the sports bill. That should have been number one. What is contained in the sports bill? You, as a journalist, citizen journalist, uh, Kwame, should now go and look at the sports bill that this thing we are discussing this evening is incorporated, if it's not already there, into the sports bill. So that when it is passed by act of parliament, then it becomes law. It becomes law, for example, to say that if the Black Stars are invited and they are playing a qualification series, this is what is due them. So we don't need to be a public debate. If they give the 15,000, we don't need to be a public debate because already enshrined in the law. Two, a Ghanaian coach should lead the Black Stars. It is already in the law. You understand what I'm saying? Three, the other coaches who are producing these boys are not to be isolated. They should give them some money, if not uh, cash, in terms of uh, their uh, training fee, equipment, equipment, and it should be given to them. Like I know here, the sacrificial work he did many years, or I think 205 or 206, mm. when he went on tour of the whole country, identified players, most of these boys are playing Division 1 now. Yeah. If you go to Wa, uh, Techim and all those, especially the northern block of the country. Uh, so that's what should be done. Then three. Now, we ask you, Sapia and Max Okonedi, what is your core team? You know, I mentioned it. The mm -hmm. So this thing, what should we be done? Uh, anytime there's a FIFA free beat, this majority of these boys should assemble. If it is Europe that is the central point, uh, like France or Netherlands, they should meet there and play quality Friendlies. friendly matches. You play Portugal, especially those who are qualified. You play them, you test them. The boys know that, oh, I played alongside Lampard, I played uh, alongside Van Persie, I played alongside Lionel Messi. So when they now meet in uh, Brazil, it wouldn't be a, a, a what do you call it, a inferior to superior relationship. It's a shoulder to shoulder. You see, sometimes the way uh, Sule Mutari behaves towards uh, David Beckham and co. It's to show that you are playing for Manchester United and playing for uh, <laughs> uh, Inter Milan. So what's the difference? The same level. So the platform should also be raised. And three, when we are now talking about the blast side, people should not cast insinuations. You may disagree with the coach or with anybody, but don't insult him. So the level of uh, public discourse like we are doing should be decent. Okay. And then lastly, we should promote... Our people at all levels 
to enter into the executives of Wafu Car FIFA. That is what killed us those days when they couldn't qualify because there was no mouthpiece at the top. So in Cairo, they cannot decide that, oh, let's make only Central Africa and North Africa to qualify. I know what the blast has suffered in 1974 with Zahir. Mm -hmm. It was terrible. The blast has won the Madi were more Twitter over there. And that thing went to pass because nobody could fail. Nobody spoke exactly. about it. And unfortunately, yes, we now we to... have them out. Now we have uh, multi TV. Now we can stand here <laughs> and talk about it. Exactly. Those days, there was nothing like that. Only GBC, <laughs> yeah. radio box. That's all. I, I'm going to give Professor the last word. Yeah. Prof, we, we are there now. You've given us uh, your expert uh, yes. thoughts on what we should do to um, you know, sustain um, this uh, qualification that we have done. I'll put this very difficult one to you. Mm. Mm -hmm. Does Kusiapia go alone, or you think he needs some help? From where? That's what I'm asking. Yeah, but not uh, a technical... Uh, I am know, asking you. You know, I, I think uh, uh, if he needs any help, he will, he will say it himself. And I think uh, he's been given the help that he, he, he's looking for. I mean, uh, we have uh, his seniors, those who have coached him. They are still in the system. We have the... the, the, the the uh, 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 Samadis, the, the Osam Dudus, the Benkovi, even our, uh, our uncle Benkovi is that. And uh, I mean, and some of us uh, are played with him, you know. So, I mean, like, uh, what, even this, this kind of discussions that we have, we, I think they do, you know. Uh, uh, so you had a thought of our two very experienced men when it comes to football and football administration here in Ghana. One was a former international star. In fact, he was a part of the team that won as our third Nations Cup in 1978, and that is Mohamed Ahmed Polo. The other one, a sports administrator and a football historian, Uncle James Oyidiji, given us uh, historical connotations um, as to how Ghana have come this far. And of course, what he is looking forward to seeing the Ghana Football Association do as a part of the build-up to Brazil 2014. We have up to seven Seven months to prepare, and he's calling for very, very important first-class international friendlies to get the guys in very good shape. And I recall, prior to 2010, we played some very strong international games um, against the likes of uh, Holland before um, South Africa 2010. Hopefully, the Ghana Football Association would be able to line some very top, top international friendlies going into uh, Brazil 2014. And who knows? After a round of 16 in Germany 2006, quarterfinal appearance in South Africa 2010, thus might be the chance for Africa to go beyond the quarterfinal stage. Cameroon did it in 1990, only losing out to England. The Black Stars looking forward to making a difference in Brazil 2010. 14. We're going to be going for another break at this point. When we come back, there's still a lot more as far as uh, uh, FIFA uh, 2014 in Brazil is concerned because uh, Algeria have made it at the expense of uh, Burkina Faso. We'll be bringing you the highlights of that game. Of course, uh, together with uh, the uh, qualifiers that were played in uh, Europe, quite a number of countries making it there, like the likes of Portugal, France have made it, but some countries like Sweden have been disappointed. All those and more coming up after this break. the Barclays Premier League thus November. The battle for premiership honours is gradually shaping up as Man City welcomed the Canaries from Norwich on Saturday 2nd November. Belief has been restored at Anfield with the exciting Liverpool taking on the Cottages from Fulham on the 9th of November. It is a good time to be a gunner with Arsenal in the form of your lives as Southampton visit the Emirates on the 23rd. It is back-to-back -back Arsenal Fiesta with the Bluebirds from Cardiff taking on the Gunners on November the 30th. All games kick off at 3pm with expert analysis commencing at 2.30pm. Multi-TV, just thrills. Your new lighting really provides the finishing touch. Where did you get this from? Global Lighting Center, of course. They've always been affordable and their quality is second to none. When it comes to lighting, there's only one name, Global Lighting Center. We've got all the latest European models. It's not just the quality outside. Our office lighting features European standard capacitors and ballast to protect your products. Our outdoor lights are weather protected and their diffusers won't discolor over time. Moreover, we offer technical advice to all our customers before and after sales. All of which convinced me and my family that Global Lighting has the brightest ideas and at the most affordable prices for all our lighting needs. Global Lighting Center, your solution to quality lighting. Watching everything.
Multi TV is organizing a national installer training throughout the country. The training is for fresh people who would like to learn about satellite installation. Trainees will also go through some marketing tutorials to turn them into result oriented salesmen. Upper East. Bogatanga from December 10. Pick a form at Melmat Multimedia. Western Region at Asankwegra on December 13. Pick a form at CME Enterprise. Cost of training is 40 Ghana CDs, which includes ID card, certificate, and lunch. To pick up a form, call 0302. 211-688 or 0244-340-424 and 0244-340-415. What do you have? Bring it hope to the hopeless. Thus and every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Only on Joy Sports, the Premier League show. The English Premier League is back on your screen. Tune in to Joy Sports on Multi TV. Thus and every Saturday as we relive the passion, the suspense, and excitement of English football. Premier League, this and every Saturday, only on Joy Sports. The English Premier League lets the games begin. Just to let you know that the English Premier League is big and heavy on the Zap platform. Coming up this Saturday, it's going to be Arsenal, who are the league leaders against surprise uh, package of the season, Southampton. What a season it's been for uh, that uh, side, uh, together with their manager, of course, Maurizio Poetino, and quite a number of their players who have had call-ups into the English side. The likes of Adam Lanana, uh, their James Rodriguez has also made it into the team, so it's a huge for Southampton this season, they come up against Arsenal at the Emirates Stadium. For Arsenal, well, it's it's 
a brilliant opportunity for them to get back to winning ways after that loss to Manchester United. Can they get that results? Well, on Saturday, 2.30 p.m., I'm going to be here together with my pundits as we build up to the game. We're still staying on issues of a World Cup qualifier still because Algeria have made it to the World Cup at the expense of uh, Burkina Faso. The first game ended 3-2 in favour of uh, the Stallions of Burkina Faso. Unfortunately, the result was not good enough in uh, Algeria to see them through to the next stage of uh, the competition, which would have been their first ever appearance at the World Cup. Again, we bring you the highlights. It was a tricky Burkina Faso side who held a 3-2 advantage and the African Cup of Nations runners-up were no pushovers. Despite the one-goal deficit, the Desert Foxes would have been confident going into the game, having not lost at the Mustafa Chaka Stadium since 2002. Islam Slimani had a good chance to put a side in front, but he failed to trouble the keeper with his head. The first shot on target came in the dying minutes of the first half, as the team went into the break at 0-0. The half-time interval seemed to do the home team wonders, as they eventually took the lead. And look at that explosion of activity amongst the Algerian players. Algeria nearly scored an own goal late in the match, the uprights coming to their rescue. They did, however... But he was born in Nairobi and he's decided to go there and have a look at how cycling is uh, developing in his country of uh, birth. We're building up to the Joy Sports Invitational later this uh, weekend. It's November 23rd. Up to 18 companies have registered to take part in those year's events. And in the last couple of uh, weeks, we've been bringing you interviews of teams that have registered to take part in this year's competition. It's a turn of Ghana Commercial Bank. Let's have a listen to them as we build up to the Joy Sports Invitational. We have been around for a while. We are defending champions on the ladies' penalty shootouts. And I think my ladies, as you can see, they are all fired up. The training has been very, very vigorous. We have had some of them flying out and coming back. And as we're speaking right now, our managing director is still in, uh, uh, what do you call it, UK. He's making some few meetings with Aston Wenger to come back with new strategies for the men to be able to take the cup. You can see them. Everybody here is fully prepared. The bank has given them all the support that they needed. When you come here, you can see even our team B is still training. We have our volley court. We go back there to do the volley training. We have the long tennis court. We have, the, we have virtually everything here for them to train with. Some of them are macho men self. They have even done body work. So we don't... <laughs> So we don't we don't have any we won't have mercy for anybody. So any team that is coming to face GCB, he can go back and don't do the competition at all because we are ready to kill. Any team that faces GCB will bow. Let's go to it. I'm the coach of the team, Julius Ablo, and I've been with the team for, if I'm not like roughly about four years. I think last year you saw us at the competition, and um, tactically. Everybody saw that we are the best team on the foot of play. For whatever reasons, we don't know, but we couldn't leave the trophy the last time. But this time, what we are telling people that we are coming there, and not just coming there to play football, we are coming there to play and win as well. Of course, I'm saying so not because I just want to say it. I have reliable players like Daniel Taki, Captain Lenos Lanti, uh, Leslie Essien, Samuel Frimpong, Abeta Chenfuo, and, and Bena, uh, Boahin and others. I mean, they are there. Goalkeeper Adolf Aja and others, they are there and they have all made up their mind that this time they are not going to allow the trophy to slip by. We are determined, we can assure you. Like my second trader, well, I wouldn't say we, don't, uh, we are not going to have any mercy for anything. Of course, anything can come out and do whatever they want. But all that we want to tell them that no team, no team will beat us. And we are assuring the competition we are not going to win any match through penalties. We will win our matches within regulation time. That is what we need to do. Tablo, I will tell you. My name is Sarah Bimpon, GCV Training School. I'm part of the lady team. And we are assuring our competitors that we are coming fully. As they know, we are the defending champions. We continue to be the champions because you could see the eagle flying high and high. It's never coming down. So the ladies' team is not coming down. And we are telling our opponents that as we prepare strongly, they should also be ready for us because we are much more ready for them, uh, more than they think. And this time we are bringing the cup to GCB. GCB! Yeah. The 
captain for the uh, GCB boys listen, or men team, actually. Now, we've had various sections of training. And as we are talking now, we are ready for any team that will come before us. When you look at some of our players, like we have 30 men, we have ACN, we have Richard Wine and all kind of players that we have over there. They are not coming from anywhere, but they are coming from straight from GCB, actually. Yeah, I mean, we are not going to create any room for complacency. We are going all out to win our games, actually. So that was uh, the team from the Ghana Commercial Bank uh, as uh, they prepare for the Joy Sports Invitational later this uh, weekend at the Elwax Sports Stadium. Well, quite a number of teams are preparing. Some say they've been to Brazil, to Holland, to England, and so many other countries all uh, with regards to their preparations. We see who will come out tops uh, at this year's event. is going to be the seventh in the series, and I can't wait for Saturday and go there and have some fun. On that note, we draw the curtains on this morning's edition of our Sports Day. Thanks to the entire Joy Sports team for production, and of course, to the technical team who made this possible. Thank you so much. And for you out there, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.